We call ourselves the Digital Media Performance Management Company. And what we mean by that is really helping companies that are trying to make money with online video to make more money by understanding the big picture of how their business works and how the different parts of it interrelate to each other. So, for example, it's great to know about viewer engagement, it's great to know about quality of service, but what's really great is to understand how quality of service influences viewer engagement. What's even better is to also combine that with understanding how viewer engagement drives revenue and how things you do for the sake of revenue end up yielding more profit or maybe not. So it's about bringing together all those different parts of the business, bringing together all the different data sources that are necessary to understand that, and mashing it together so that the value of the whole is much greater than that of the parts. Well, we actually deal with two different classes of customers. One is the companies that are publishers, media companies themselves. We also deal a lot with CDNs and basically bring our analytics to the media company, the publisher, through the CDN that they're doing business with. So the CDN will put up our reporting and analytics in a customer portal for their customers, or in fact, not just customers, but business partners. Because one of the things we're seeing is really a change in the whole digital media supply chain, where a lot of companies are going to be entering the CDN space and doing so with innovative business models. So probably six months or a year ago, everybody thought the CDN market is commoditizing, so it's going to consolidate. There's only going to be two or three or four big ones left. But interestingly enough, for various reasons, we're seeing a lot of new companies enter the field. Often they're telcos. You know, telcos, they really own the network that the Akamai's and Limelights of the world are operating under. So, you know, flashback to 10 years ago, Web 1.0, original dot-com boom, the word disintermediation was big then because it was all about using the web to eliminate middlemen. So if you're a telco, and you've got the Akamai's and Limelights of the world making money off of your network, wouldn't you want to know, why can't I be taking that margin for myself? Why don't I disintermediate that CDN? So at the most basic level, you've got the, the pipes, all you need is this software, this hardware, you've got a CDN, it's great. But it goes beyond that, because there's a whole change in the ecosystem with all the cable operators wanting to do TV anywhere, uh, all the telcos perhaps wanting to get into the CDN business. Uh, some people are talking about incorporating peer-to-peer -peer technology so that what used to be an ISP can now be a CDN, what used to be a CDN can now be a content aggregator, what used to be a publisher doesn't have to operate their own web uh, site but can just really be a pure content factory. Uh, so we're dealing uh, with a lot of companies that are dealing with, they have projects that are so secret that even we don't know about them yet, but we're supplying reporting and analytics to help support them. And this really coincides with uh, a new release that we're announcing this week of a new version of our CDN analytics product. This is so new, the press release hasn't even gotten out. Larry, you're getting a scoop here. I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is our product that we sell to CDNs. It provides them with reporting and analytics on their own operations as well as offering those portals to their customers and business partners. So what's new in this new release is that we're really adding that whole business partner portal on top of the customer portal as well as operating a lot, adding a lot of additional flexibility and customization capabilities around uh, the reporting and analytics tools because frankly if you're uh, generating new out-of-the-box, uh, outside-the-box, I should say, uh, business models, you can't really be constrained to saying, well, here's, here's us, here's a customer, here's the variables we deal with, here's the attributes we deal with. So adding this flexibility really is allowing us to accommodate these crazy, interesting new business models that we're starting to see in this digital media supply chain. You know, going back to digital media performance management, we really think that we're very unique in covering that footprint. Uh, there's other companies that may overlap with us. So for example, people often ask us how we compare to Omniture. Well, Omniture is really focused on uh, creating analytics for the marketing function 
and companies that use the web as a way of marketing their core business. We're a lot more focused on the operational management of companies for whom the web is their core business. So uh, when we talk about multiple data sources that are necessary to create this big picture that we specialize in offering, well, one of those data sources is web analytics systems like Omniture or Web Trends or what have you, along with the CDNs, along with the ad networks, along with data we gather by instrumenting the media players to get really detailed information about how people are relating to the video. Uh, what we always say is we can measure both what the viewer does to the video and what the video does to the user. So it's all about combining uh, engagement and video for our video analytics, which is uh, v v combining engagement and, in and uh, quality of service. And that's sort of a microcosm of what we do in the bigger picture across data sources. It's all about taking these individual areas, which are certainly of value by themselves, but generating a force multiplier in the value by seeing how these things are all interrelated.